Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kathy. Hello. Uh, hey, hey. Oh, you heard that. <laughs> uh huh. I heard you. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys, I'm starting to record. Go ahead and put yourself on, um, well, whatever you want to do. Um, it's five o'clock. I'm going to give it one more minute. Let these kittens out of my office so that they're not purring at me the whole entire time and I'm ready to get this party started. <laughs> Kicking out the kitties. Yeah. So, oh. you want to go? I got just one. You want to go, baby? Minute. We'll see who else is going to join us. Yay! Happy Monday, everybody! Yes, and holy guacamole! Can you guys even believe it's almost the end of October? What happened? Agreed, right? I know. I don't know what happened either. I don't know what happened. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get started because it's 501 and I know Jackie and I and we're like, okay, what are we going to talk about? And then we could talk for five hours about everything. So <laughs> I know that we're excited to bring you lots of good content and stuff. If you want, go ahead and write your name in the chat, write where you're coming from, write who's your leader, um, whatever you want to say in there, but introduce yourself. Let us get to know you as you're jumping on. Make sure to mute yourself. We we, we are recording this just so that um, for those people who can't make it with us tonight, they can watch this a little bit later. Jackie and I are super excited to bring y'all some tips and tricks about how to grow your fan base, your follower base on social media, particularly on Facebook. Um, so really, yeah, whoop. So really quickly, um, my name is Hannah Walker. I've been in Jaffa for, or working as a business really for a little over two years. I'm a district manager too. I am tired of being a district manager too. So I'm on my way to DM3, district director. Yeah. And um, <laughs> yes. so, um, so that's a little bit about me. I'm in Portland, Oregon. And I'm really happy to be here with you guys tonight. I love social media and marketing. That's my background. So Jackie, you want to introduce yourself? Hey everyone, thanks for joining me here in the Yuma Beauty Bar. My name is Jackie Alves. I am a district director too with Jaffer. I've been in Jaffer for four and a half, whoa, nope, only four years now. And I am super excited to be here and do some social media training with Hannah because not only do I love Hannah, I love you guys and I love social media. Yes. Okay, so Jackie, what are we here for? What are we gonna talk about tonight? So we are going to talk about how to get more people to like your Facebook business page, not just how to get likes on your post, but how to get people to like the actual page. And I got to say, what's up, Tracy, my beautiful girl out there, Tracy Drake, what's up? So, and yes. Vicki Hacking, our beautiful ambassador said, we're her favorite trainers, Hannah. She did? She, she said did. that in the she chat? chat. Yep. <laughs> what? I am so honored. Vicki, I love you. Thank you so much. We love you. So I also really quick before we get started, I want to encourage everybody if you need to go to gallery view so that you can see Hannah when she speaks. She's having to use her phone as a microphone tonight. So it may just go to her still picture if you have it on speaker view. So you may want to swap over to gallery view on your laptop or your phone so that you can see everyone or so that you can see Hannah or myself when we speak. So just if you're getting just a still photo of Hannah that's black and white with her uh, colored hair, then it's probably because you're just seeing her phone when she's speaking because that's her microphone tonight. So just a quick yep. tip there. So yep. we're going to talk tonight about how do you get more likes on your Facebook pages. One of the things, Hannah's got some amazing things to share with us as well, but um, I really want you guys to be able to get people to like and follow your page so that they'll see what you post more often rather than just liking a post occasionally when it's getting some good vibes and some good algorithm action from Facebook. I want them to be one of the people that like you. Also, I would love for your social media presence to increase. So I read Jackie, really quickly before yeah. you go. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Can everybody comment below just down in the chat? Do you, does everybody have a Facebook business page? I think just really quickly, just level setting. Um, because I know I have some new consultants on and I don't know if all of them have a Facebook business page. So I think really quickly, if we can just speak to the value of a Facebook business page. Mm -hmm. So 
just really quickly, everybody, you have to think of your, you know, you have your personal page where you are, you know, you know your audience. And I think that's something really important when you're a marketer is remember that you know your audience, right? So you know your friends, you know your family, you know if they're going to be open or not to um, you, quote unquote, maybe spamming them all the time with Jaffer posts and images and things like that. But we are serious business women and men, right? And we want to work our business. And so your Facebook business page, you have to think of it kind of like your storefront, right? Like, yeah, you're out, you're about, you're going to talk to your friends and family about your business casually, right? But your Facebook business page is where people can go and kind of shop you and shop your product and get a sense of you. So think of it as like your storefront where people can kind of wander in, get a vibe for what you're all about, what your products are all about. And honestly, you can do things with fa your Facebook business page that you cannot do with a personal page. Um, on a site, so you can boost posts, you can create ads, and that's how you can also build a following and people who want to who are interested in you and interested in your product that you might not ordinarily meet that are beyond your warm market, right? Which is your family and friends. This is reaching beyond your warm market to that, maybe that person who's walking by your store, if you were a brick and mortar and they're like, hmm, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna pop in there. So what Jackie and I are really talking about tonight is your Facebook business page and getting more of that traffic. It, again, if it was a brick and mortar store, you're thinking about that person who's casually walking by and they're casually scrolling through Facebook, they see your post and they're like, wait, I wanna go in there. I wanna go into her store and learn more about Jaffra or whatever else she's talking about. And it really is important to have a Facebook business page. I have to say that you can get in Facebook jail if you do too much on your personal page, particularly when it comes to posting links and other things like that. Facebook is really cracking down on business over here, uh, social, personal life stuff over here. So just want to level set a little bit before Jackie goes on about why we're talking about a business page and not your personal page. Okay, so there we go. Yeah, and Hannah, you have a great point that, you know, we want to keep our store within our store. Um, you know, we want people to know that we have a personal life. We want them to like and love us for who we are and, you know, who we are in real life. Um, yes, I am obviously um, a Jaffer consultant and a makeup artist, but, you know, I'm also a mom and a daughter and, you know, I have a church family and I have regular friends that don't even purchase Jaffra and they want to be involved in what I'm doing on Facebook too. So I love being able to keep my page separate and all about my business. Also, like Hannah said, we have some advantages by doing a business page. You can boost posts. You can see who's who's liked it. You can uh, check more like where the audience is coming from, what your demographic is, who's really, really engaging with you. You just have some advantages by doing that in the first place. So what I want to talk to you about is your Facebook business page. And I want you to be able to create a presence for yourself on social media. I don't want you to have to be the person that is spamming all your friends and your family, like Hannah says. And you guys, if you've ever seen us before, do a training like this. You know how we feel about that. We, we want you to be loved and liked by your Facebook family and not ignored by them because you're crazy spammer lady. So doing your, your separate, your business page is going to be really helpful like that but now you can build that business page. We want you to be able to build that. We want you to promote it. We want you to be successful. So keeping it over there is really gonna be helpful for you. So I remember when I first started in Jaffra, I started on my personal page, of course, and I really do suggest that when you're brand new, go ahead and start a little bit on there, letting people know this is what you've done. Maybe you're going to do your unboxing video. Maybe you're just going to announce to them, hey, you guys, I'm so excited about my, my Jaffra business. I've created um, a business page for it. I want you to go like it and follow me. This is the name of my business page. So you can use your personal page to drive that traffic over there from your good friends and family who've been following you on Facebook for years, but you want them to know about that business page. So don't be afraid to hop on there live and tell them or just do a quick post if you're afraid to go live and let them know I started a new business page. I'm so excited about what Jaffer is doing today and what's going on this year in my business. Please go like and follow my page. 
So begin to drive people over to over there to that business page. So like I said, that's what I did in the beginning. When I first got my kit, I watched the video the other day. It's so funny. I got my kit and I spread all of this product out on my table. And I was like, oh, I'm so excited. You guys, I want somebody to book a party. Like I didn't even know what I was talking about. And then one of my friends was like, I don't know what a party is, but I'll book it. So I was able <laughs> to kind of launch my business that way from my personal page. But then I quickly created a business page. And then I remember being recognized in, I think it was in the action or in something from Jaffra where I had grown my Facebook, my social media presence faster than anybody else in Jaffra that month. So I got special recognition for that, but all I was doing was telling everybody to go like my page. I, I didn't know all the things I know now. I didn't have all of the tech savvy things, you know, like Hannah's gonna show you later, how to literally invite people, actually do the button pushing and the inviting people to like your page. I didn't know how to do that. I was just telling everybody to go like it and follow me. So I was actually growing quite a large business and also by sharing a lot of lives. And like Hannah and I are always talking about, you're really going to get a lot more engagement. Facebook is really going to push you to the forefront because they like us doing those videos and going lives and going live. So that's really going to be helpful also, but I want you, I want you to feel successful and be able to build this up. So I want you to be able to um, know how to get engagement and create content on your actual business page in your posts or in your lives. So in your post, I know you hear Hannah and I talk a lot about um, creating content that brings value to your audience's lives. Okay. So like, what does that even mean? Adding value. Well, bringing them something that they're going to appreciate. That's not always like, Hey, look at my sale. You know, and then we just post, you know, Jaffra's prefab photo that they took, which are beautiful. I use them a lot, you know, when they have a photo of product, I use that, but, but not just posting that posting something about you, uh, creating something that's going to bring value to their lives. Like today in my group, where I actually do post pictures of product, I posted these three things instead of just a photo that Jaffer already has of this, which is beautiful. I posted it. I was holding it. You can see that it's on my beauty bar. So my clients, people who are already my clients recognize those are my hands and that's my beauty bar. So it's an actual photo. And I was telling them, you know, that I'm a guru of color matching. So I guarantee I can get your color right. You know, just being kind of funny in my own personal group. But even if it's a picture of product, it's still, it looks, you know, like it's mine. So, but not always being product. Uh, sometimes in my live videos, if I do from beginning to end, I'll go in and spray my hair and I'll be like, and oh my God, I just tried this new hairspray. You guys have to try it. It's Paul Mitchell. I didn't even know they still made hairspray. It smells like great Kool-Aid, seriously. And it looks like a bullhorn, but you know what? My hair is so stiff. I could get in a car accident and probably be all right. And everybody likes that. I just shared with them what my favorite hardcore hairspray is and you'll see in the comments they'll be like wait what was that hairspray where did you get it how much did it cost so it doesn't always have to be about Jaffra and no I don't sell Paul Mitchell I won't make a dime off of anybody who goes and buys Paul Mitchell but I was just telling you because you're my friends if you want big fat hard Texas hair like I have today you should <laughs> use this hairspray that's in a bullhorn <laughs> well you know wait, wait Jackie I have to jump in and say something one thing I love about what you just said is you want to share the things you love with your friends, right? You're like, oh my gosh, I have to tell you about this, this hairspray I just have, right? Think about when you're on your Facebook business page, especially when you're doing um, your lives, right? Think it's social media, right? So think about that you're building relationship with these people and you're just trying to spill the tea about the things you love. And those things happen to be Jaffa things a lot of the time, right? Because we're there to do business, but you're just telling them the things you love. I love this always foundation, but you know what? Here, I put it on me and you're just being real. You're being relatable, but you're just like, hey girl, I gotta tell you, like, this is the thing I got. You're gonna love it too. Let me tell you why I love it. We do that in our relationships with friends all the time. Right? How many times has people asked you, like, where'd you get that shirt? Oh, girl, you got to go down to TJ Maxx, blah, blah, blah. It's that same idea, right? Jackie's just showing how she does it on social media, on her business page. And she's a great example of this. I would highly encourage you to follow her so you can see an example of that. Sorry, Jackie, I had to jump in because you just no. said the perfect thing. 
that was a good point. And you know how you're saying we share with our friends. And if you treat everybody like they truly are your friend, you're sharing great stuff with them. And even remembering that it doesn't have to be, you know, necessarily something that you love. It could be something that you're experiencing, like not necessarily a product, but something that you're experiencing. Like I dropped my daughter off at school today and this and that, I couldn't believe it, you know, because then people can identify with you if they've experienced the same thing. And something that I'm finding that's been really helpful to some of my audience is my experience since I started going through menopause. And you guys, if you know me at all, you know, I love to talk about things most people don't talk about. Um, but, you know, 2020, I, it's funny because I've been talking a lot about how bad 2020 jacked me up because not only did it have all of this and that and the other thing, it, it heaped menopause on me too. So so my skin is changing. My foundation needs are completely different. Hi, Jackie. I just wanted to ask a question. Sure. Oh. Go right ahead. Um, I wanted to ask a question about, because uh, I don't know how to go about, you know, building the Facebook um, business page. I was wondering how can I go about doing that? Can I answer that, Jackie? Sure. Okay. So, Teresa, glad you... Um, ask a question. So definitely feel free y'all to ask questions. Type them in the chat because Jackie and I have some stuff we want to make sure that we get out, um, but we'll definitely come back to questions at the end. But Teresa, to answer your question, um, if you go on to Jaffer Biz in our, in our back office, jafferbiz.com, right? We have a section called virtual business. And in virtual business, there's a section called social media. If you go in there, it actually, um, scroll down a little bit, there's actually a section called Facebook business pages, at business page, and they have a place where they've detailed out instructions about how you can set up your Facebook business page. So Jaffer Biz, uh, virtual business, social media, and then uh, Facebook business page. And there is a resource guide in there to t that shows you exactly how to set it up, okay? So that's a great question. Thank some you. Of you don't have. Yes, you're welcome. Yeah, I'm glad you shared that too, Hannah. They made it pretty easy for us to just follow along with what they posted in there. So super glad you got a chance to share that. So um, so yeah, me talking about, you know, menopause is, is uh, thank you 2020, like another surprise. You know, I've, I've been talking a lot about that and also sharing something that a supplement I've been taking, a vitamin that's really been helping with hot flashes. Also my foundation, always foundation stays on even when I have hot flashes. That's super important to women my age and a little bit older that are going through menopause. Always is um, hot flash proof, who would have thunk it? And then also um, I'm taking hyaluronic acid and these are the, the vitamins that I just get from Amazon, but they've really been helping my shoulder that sometimes hurts and my squeaky knees. So as I go, you know, throughout my day and throughout a makeup tutorial, I'll share really quick some of these little things that I've been trying and women really appreciate extra value that I can add to their life because they they know, like, and trust me already. That's why they're there in the first place. So if I've got something that I can suggest to them, even if it's not Jaffra or not even makeup, maybe they're so going to appreciate that. Or even if I've just shared something that I struggled with today, one day I came in and I had already scheduled a live tutorial and I like to, to be able to do them once in a while, something will come up, but I try my hardest to stick to the day and time that I already announced I would be there. But I had had an argument with my husband that morning and I was crying when I got here and I didn't want to do it. So, you know, what? I just got on and I was like, worst day ever. How do you put on makeup after you fight with your husband and you're crying? Well, this is how. And everybody was like, oh my God, girl, thank you so much. Sometimes I have the worst morning. My kids are crazy. I can't get ready. Thank you for sharing that. So even your struggles, it doesn't have to be always like, hey, everything's great. And don't I look pretty and look at my my um, product, it can, it's life, even on a business page. And women will recognize that and they will love you for being able to relate to you. Isn't that right, Hannah? Because I know you do that too sometimes. Yes. Oh my gosh, that is exactly right. And like, girl, I can't even tell you. There are times when I'm like in my life, I'm like, what? Why is this person texting? You know, when you're on your phone and like a text thing comes down, I'm like, why is this person texting me? Then I go off on like a crazy story about that. Then I come back to what I'm talking about. But here's the thing. <laughs> Here's what Jackie is telling you. And guys, this is one of the key takeaways I want you to have for tonight. Like if you have a piece of paper in front of you, this is a key takeaway. Stories, your story and who you are 
is what is really going to sell people. So Jackie said something really pivotal. And when she was talking, she said, they know me, they like me and they trust me. Again, I want to go back to, to emphasizing that relational component. It is social media. And yes, we can use social media for our business, right? But what we're really trying to do is cultivate relationship, cultivate that no like and trust factor. Because listen, because I trust Jackie, I'm going to go buy those vitamins. I'm probably going to get that, that, um, that, what is it? Hairspray. I don't even use hairspray and I'll use it, whatever. I'm going to get it because she's my friend and I trust her, right? She's not failed me when it's come to beauty recommendations and those types of things. So being relatable, sharing your story, coming from where you're at helps people build an emotional attachment to you. Because here's the deal, guys, flat static posts of Jaffra's, like they create beautiful social media stuff, but I can't create an emotional attachment or investment in a flat static picture of a relate of, of lipstick, right? But I can, if, I'm, I'm looking at my friend, Jackie. I trust my friend, Jackie. She's telling me that this lipstick color is really great. She's giving me some pro tips on what to do and how to use it. And then she's blending in her story. All of that is building a relationship. So you can still be very personal and intimate on your business page, but it's in your store, right? It's like where you have those loyal customers that keep coming back to you and you're sharing and you're, all the things that are going on with them. So sharing who you are, sharing your story, it's kind of counterintuitive. And Natalie Goucher talked about this, and I really want to encourage you guys. She is an amazing social media trainer. I loved everything that she came and brought to the Amber region. Um, and so if you don't know who I'm talking about, talk to your leader, Natalie Goucher. She's doing social media trainings for us. But she honestly said, listen, you don't have to post about your product or your business opportunity all the time. If you're giving people entertainment, education, and other helpful information, what that's going to do is that's going to win their trust and they're going to want to follow you. You're going to build a bigger fan base that way or a bigger following that way. And then those few times you do talk about your job or product, they're going to be like, where, where can I get that? How do I get that? Oh, what's that lipstick color? Because they trust you. They know that you're not just in it to sell them all the time. And so one thing, again, I would really encourage you to follow Jackie because one thing she does that's really great. Now she is a makeup artist of 30 plus years. So she's a pro, but she takes that knowledge. And a lot of the things, a lot of the time she goes on, she does her live, she does her tutorials and she just teaches about makeup, not necessarily Jaffa makeup all the time. I mean, yes, it is usually Jaffa makeup, but she's not afraid to compare it to other products out there on the market. She talks about other products out there on the market. She educates herself. So she knows what to say to clients when they have questions. So that is another key component of what you guys, I want you guys to take away is educate your audience and that's adding value to them. Like, how do I do, how do I um, do highlight and contour? Well, you don't, I mean, you can find a Jaffa product, right? To demonstrate that with, but you don't even have to talk about the actual product that you're demonstrating with, but you're teaching them a trick that they can use and learn and apply in their life. And she's going to think your client that's watching is thinking, oh my gosh, Jackie just taught me this really great makeup trip tip. Trip, tip. I really appreciate that about her. Oh, you know what? I really like the way that color shined on her. I wonder what she used. I'm going to ask her because I trust her. I have a relationship with her. So does that make sense? You guys, it's like to drop a little, like, yes, I get it in the comments down there because it's, it's a different approach. You don't always have to lead with here's our highlight and contour pow powder. Okay. What, why, why do I care? What does that mean to me? Right. But when I say, I'm going to teach you guys something, I'm going to add value to your life. I just went into my, um, Facebook group, my VIP client group this week. And I said, you know what it's, we're, it's going to be Halloween on Saturday. And this is the perfect time to really play with your makeup. Makeup on Halloween go so well together because even if you have an eyeliner, let's say you get invited to a last minute party, you don't have anything. Even if you have a liquid eyeliner, I'm going to teach you a way to use your liquid eyeliner and be the cutest darn cat at the party or have a little sugar candy skull on your face with the makeup you have, right? I'm not saying buy my Jaffa eyeliner. It's going to get there in about a week, but I'm still teach you some little trick or whatever. I don't, I don't even care about that. It's just adding value to them educating them, giving them something. If you overgive to them 
When they're ready, they will come back and be your most loyal customers, your most loyal followers, um, because you're not asking all the time for something in return. When we post just pictures about our sales and stuff, it's like we're always asking them to shop, like shop, 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 look at my sale, look at my sale, look at my sale. It's not that. It's here's the value I'm adding. Here's the education I want to give to you. And then, and I like you and you're silly and you get on and you talk about your menopause and that's real and I relate to you. And I just want to say this, like obviously me and Jackie are going to have very different audiences. I'm not in my menopause, right? So that's not my, that's not my life right now, but her story is going to, is going to resonate with somebody and they're going to follow her. Whereas I don't even know what my audience is. I'm crazy. So those crazy people are going to follow me. Right. And that's okay. And what I want to tell each and every one of you on the call tonight is that there is enough people with skin out there for all of us. And we each have our own unique angle and story. You need to figure out what your brand is and trust that your tribe, your people, they're going to find you and they're going to love you and they're going to buy from you. Um, if you lead with value, if you're thinking about them, right, you're not always just thinking about yourself. I don't, I don't need to have the same clients that Jackie has. She can provide a better service for them than I can when they really relate and resonate with her and she's going through what they're going through. Same thing for me with my clients, right? So, I, wow, I just went off on a really long tangent, but <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, help me out here. That's what I have, <laughs> the adding value to people yeah. matters so much. Yeah. And you have your, your spot on about relationships and what we need to share. I want to talk about something really practical too, because maybe you would love to do a post or get on live, but you're not really sure where to start. Maybe you eat, you have a favorite product maybe, or a little tip you'd like to share, but you're just not sure what's going to sound good. Maybe you feel like you trip over your words and you're like, man, I don't even know what to say. Yeah, great. Always foundation. I don't know how to say anything cool about it. Now, if you guys have ever joined Hannah and I for training for social media, you've probably heard us talk about features and benefits. And I know this is one of Hannah's favorite things. Um, I love to figure out what I'd like to talk about. Sometimes it's my favorite thing. And sometimes it's something on sale or something new that I can't wait to tell my audience about. But you know what? If you're not sure how to find a feature of a product or a benefit, and I, I've shared this before. I learned that when I worked for Zales, the diamond store, they taught us how to show a feature and benefit of jewelry. And I kept thinking it's the feature is it's shiny and the benefit is it's pretty. What are you talking about? I was so confused by the feature and benefit thing. <laughs> but then once I came into Jaffra, I was like, holy guacamole, this is so much easier because I truly, truly love, love, love Jaffra and all of these features of what's in the skincare or the makeup then I know well, what's the benefit of what it's featuring. How does that benefit me, right? So I was able to really grasp it and it's really changed the way that I communicate, the way that I talk about product. But maybe you're like, I don't know what a feature is, let alone what the benefit is. Well, let me introduce you to the Jaffa Bible. I'm <laughs> sure you have all seen it. I'm sure you've all looked through it and maybe some of you have read through it and understand what I'm already going to say, but I just would like to point out that, for example, the Luna Bright clay white clay mask says right here in the description, and all of the products are like this. It says instantly brightens and clarifies, purifies and refines with white clays and papaya, and then it even tells you how to use it. So it's got features and benefits listed right on there for you. Something else I would love to point out that we just talked about in my makeup class. I know most of you guys know I teach online makeup courses. Um, we were talking about concealers recently. And so I was sharing about um, the CC cream concealer from the Jaffra Beauty Collection. Is everybody familiar with that product? It's my most favorite concealer. Yes. Yeah, it's amazing, right? And uh, seriously, like one of my best selling products that, um, like it just, it nobody, the best. nobody has a concealer that even compares to it. And you guys know that I have tried a lot of concealers. I've been in the makeup and cosmetic industry for 27 years. So I've tried a lot, but this is honestly my most favorite ever in the history of the planet. 
Of course, I can't find the concealer page now that I want to share it with you. Can While you do that, Jackie, I want to ask everybody, to, I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to type this in the chat. You're watching Jackie do this right now, right? And she, let's pretend this was a Facebook Live. And she's like, oh man, I wanted to show you about my favorite concealer. And she has the book out. When you look at her, do you, when you're watching her right now, do you feel like you don't like her because she's looking at the book? Do you trust her less? Or do you, do you feel like she is not relatable? Like, are you embarrassed for her or anything like that? Comment below and let me know. My guess is, or my hope is that the answer is no, right? Who, who cares if she's looking at the book? Helen, yes, you trust her more. Why? Because it's relatable. Because you're like, you know what? That would be me. I don't know where that page is. I look at myself flipping through the book. That's okay. The reason I'm pointing this out while she does find that page is you do not have to show up and be perfect. One of the benefits of video and live is that it's live and it's okay to mess up. And that's part of you being relational. So she didn't know where the page was. Who cares? No one, no one. In fact, you love her more for it. So I just want, I just point this out because I want you all to remember that when you're doing your, when you're doing your own lives is be kind to yourself. It's okay if you don't have it all perfect. I'm not saying don't plan. Don't, you know, don't just show up and not have any kind of plan. I mean, sometimes Jackie and I do that, but you know, that's, that's like advanced lives, but like, you know, know what you want to talk about, but it's okay. If you're like, Oh shoot, actually, I don't know which page it's on or whatever it's. And it's okay. If you just read the feature or the benefit, because that's real, that's relatable. You don't have to have it all memorized, right? Don't put all that pressure on yourself. Just be real. So anyway, sorry, that's my little, my little side note. I'm so glad you pointed that out. Yeah. And, and I just, you know, kept talking to you while I was thumbing through. And I really, I just wanted to tell you about this concealer because it's truly, truly amazing. I really believe it's the best one. So of course I love sharing about it. Um, but right here, when I was reading features and benefits to my makeup artistry class, I hadn't read this page specifically before because I already know so much about concealer. I didn't delve into this, but check this out. It's on page 101 in the Jaffra Bible. And it says, um, color correcting concealer. That's another reason it's called CC cream concealer, uh, protects against sun damage and masks imperfections with light breathable coverage. Okay. So that's one of the great key selling points of this concealer, but listen, the key ingredients, cucumber extract soothes and hydrates rice bran extract promotes even tone did you even know that that was in our concealer like no. this is like a treatment this isn't just something that's gonna cover up and mask your dark circles this has a little bit of a treatment with a cucumber extract in it we all know that putting slapping a cucumber on your eye is really good kind of depuffs, right but also it soothes and hydrates with the rice bran extract that promotes even tone. So it actually is helping to really, really correct the darkness, not just cover it up and add to your issues. So what a wonderful benefit. So your feature would be the cucumber extract and the rice bran. The benefits would be soothes and hydrates and promotes even tone. Like yes. what, who's not going to want that? It was just on sale for $9. Come right? on. It's so amazing. Jackie, I love it. This is such a great example. Another thing that I just want to comment and say is if let's say this again was a live, Jackie just did that on a live. I just saw Diane go get her Jaffer Bible, her full size catalog. Look, she's holding it up. I, I know that someone else is following along in their Jaffer book. Let's say I'm a client. I'm Jackie's client. I don't have that book. I'm like, Ooh, I want that. Right. But she's not saying, Hey, does anybody want this full size big catalog? Like I'll mail it to you for $5 or whatever. Right. She's just talking about it, but because she's using it in such a way, it compels, it compelled Diane to go up and go get it. It might compel another person to want to buy it and say, Hey, will you send me one of those? And actually when you send that to me, would you also throw in that lipstick you're wearing? Because I love it. Blah, blah, blah. Right. So I just, I want to show you, I'm pointing these things out, you guys, to show you that we don't always have to lead with, Hey, and buy this from me. It's just showing up, being yourself. And really what Jackie was just doing was educating all of us. All she did was educate us. She's giving us something, giving us value by showing us where in the, the draft or Bible you can find this and what the features and the benefits are. So I'm just, I'm just showing you some of the psychology that's happening. And a lot of you already did it. 
Like you already were feeding yourself, feeding into the power of what she's doing. And she didn't say, hey, go order this from Jaffer Biz right now. So yeah. I just want you to think about that. How many of them are plopping a concealer in their next order? <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Now, all of you be honest, because none of you knew about that with the cucumber stuff. Yes, I see you. I see you, Sandra. Sandra's like, me? I see it. So I, I think I think we've done a really good job. I hope. Let me know. Let us know down in the chat. But I think that we've done a really good job of showing you how, how value is really one way that you grow your fan base and your followers. And I know it seems counterintuitive, right? Because you're not putting it out in front of people's face like, buy this concealer, buy the concealer, buy the concealer, right? You're not like forcing it down people's throats, but just by talking about the features, talking about the benefits of the product, you're, you're already like piquing people's curiosity, wanting, earning their trust, mm -hmm. um, having them like you because you're being real because you couldn't find which darn page it was on. All of those things have done something to help you really build your, your follower base. So if you resonate with that, definitely comment down below in the chat. Um, if you have any questions about what we've said so far, definitely comment. Okay, so I just see a question real quick. I'll just take this one. How often should we post, especially if we haven't been posting regularly in the past? Jackie, do you want to answer that or do you want me to answer it? I, I would love to have just a, a quick thing to say about that because it's actually something that I go through regularly with my team, you know, because a lot of us have great intentions and we're like, I'm going to post every day for the rest of my life and I'm going to really cultivate my <laughs> Facebook page. And then like something blows off the hook or family shows up and you're like, I'm not getting on. I can't post anything. All my in-laws are here. You know, anything could happen and then we don't. So what I like to do is I like to take the days that I'm actually available as if it were my job, because guess what? This is my job. And I like to treat it as such so that it will pay me as such. So if that can only work two hours a week, that's okay. We all know that we can all work two hours a week in Jaffer if we want, or if you're like me, can work 200 hours a week because it's, I feel like I live, I breathe Jaffer. But if you've got two hours a week, figure out where you want to put them. And maybe you would like to do a post on Tuesday and Thursday only and allow yourself to work an hour on Tuesday and an hour on Thursday. Maybe you've got two hours on Friday and that's it. That's the only day you're working, Jeffra. That's okay. So that's going to be the day you post. I really suggest that you try a Monday, Wednesday, Friday routine. Time it. Put in your calendar. Put 9 a.m. Jaffra post or 6 p.m. or wherever you want to be with that. But then I'm not saying go live. I'm saying do a quick post, do a photo of yourself when uh, you got home at the end of the day and you still had your mascara on and it didn't run. Or, you know, a picture of your grandson who stole one of your false eyelashes and stuck it on his face like I did. And he <laughs> had this crazy little German mustache because uh, he stuck the <laughs> eyelash on his face. So that was a post. It doesn't have to be go buy my product. It's not a live video with me showing you how to do makeup. But it was it was my makeup Monday post. And I talked about how important false lashes are. And it's even better when your grandson finds the lost ones. So you can figure out a way to plop that in there. And it was a picture I took of my grandson earlier in the day so me popping that in there but being faithful to do my monday even though i was busy with grandbabies i still did it and then your wednesday and your friday and just try to be faithful to do that or like i said tuesday and thursday whatever you decide to do but be faithful to yourself you'll feel more successful about yourself when you're not putting your own self off pushing back your jaffer posting you know have integrity and do what you say you're going to do even if you only said it to your own self you'll you'll have more self respect that way too yep that's exactly right and yeah, I would just say, choose what's realistic for yourself and then just stick to it, be consistent, right? There's no magic formula about how often to post to grow your, your follower base. There's no magic formula to timing either. So I'm just gonna go ahead and answer that question before anybody asks, there's no magical time where, oh my gosh, everybody saw my mascara post. Now I'm, I've am i sold 25 mascaras. No, there's nothing like that. It's a, it's a, it doesn't work like that. Um, just be, consistent and true to yourself with the timing and I Jackie said a very pivotal thing and like honestly you guys are we business owners or not you work your schedule so put that in your calendar and hold yourself to it you owe yourself that I think one thing that's really great about um, you know, one thing that's really important, let's say when you do a Facebook live in particular, is you let your audience know, hey, come see me at Friday 
at 3 p.m. because that's the one time, that's the one hour you have to work Jaffra. You could do a quick little text post that says, hey, don't forget, I'm going live at Friday at 3 p.m. But guess what you just did too? You just made, you just put yourself on blast. So now you have to be accountable to go back and do it. You said you would be there at 3 p.m. on Friday. You've posted a couple times about it in your in the few little minutes you had on your lunch break or your whatever to to you know continue your following and your fan base. You better be there at Friday at 3 p.m. unless it's one of those seriously like dire situations where you can't do it. You're holding yourself accountable. You're having that real talk with yourself that I'm a business owner and it matters. And I will say you guys like those videos and I know Jackie and I are talking a lot about Facebook live right now. So um, in this, you know, with your content and stuff, but I'll tell you what, lives are magical. I, there was one day I was in all these other meetings for all these other things. And I was like, I haven't worked Jaffa at all today. And I was like, I don't even care. I'm getting on my, my VIP group and I'm just going to do a live. And I don't even remember what I talked about, but somehow I said something. And just because people were like, I miss you. She was like, I miss you. What are you doing? What are you up to? This is one of my clients on there. She bought a hundred dollars in product and I talked for maybe 10 minutes, right? So I'm just trying to give you guys some perspective. And again, it's that no like and trust. Like she's my girl, blah, 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 all that good stuff. But I'm just saying like all of that matters. So holding yourself accountable, making the commitment, your lives can be very profitable. Don't be afraid to jump in and just be real. So the yeah. key takeaways, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, sorry, you Hannah, I just saw a couple questions come up. I just wanted to answer really quick. Um, we had a question come up. Um, I think it was Linda wanted us to share about um, actual money results. Like how much do you make when this happens? Do you, you know, do you sell product from this? And I think it's a great question. And I love to address this one because yeah. like Hannah said, you know, do a mascara post and then, you know, you're waiting to get 25 mascara orders and then you go, forget it. I'm not successful. And I quit because nobody ordered mascara, but then, you know, notice as Hannah was telling a story about a 10 minute live that she did and she got a hundred dollar order. So that's why I say cultivate and be faithful to those two days, three days, whatever, and do them regardless. Don't do them based on response or how you feel that day. Don't work emotionally. Okay. So you want to plan your work. I'm going to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and this is just what I do and cultivate that, right? So you have a plan that you work and it's not based on emotion. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I do these great posts and I share a mascara. And then the next time I show how to use it. And then I even have a flash sale on it and I get zero. I even maybe get a couple of likes, but nobody bothered to order anything. But guess what happens the next week when I do a live or I post something, I, I Hannah, I talk for 10 minutes and I get a hundred dollar order. So we, we can't, we can't work based on emotion or solely the response of our audience because maybe nobody even hits the like button and we feel like nobody saw it. It never fails. Somebody will tell me a month later, Hey, you know what? I remember that video you did on the volcanic mask and I want to order two of them because I, I love that. And I'm thinking, why didn't you order it that day when I showed you, but maybe she had a mask from her previous line she was using. Maybe she couldn't afford it that day, you know, and, and I want you to remember that how many times on Facebook, do you see the same commercial for the same thing? Roll through, roll through. You see it on Instagram. All of a sudden you get an email from it. You see a commercial on TV. It's the same product. I must have saw this one thing for this pair of shoes 25 times, or especially like a bra or a girdle. You guys ever notice those? <laughs> Once you even like click to re look what it's about, what is that bra she's wearing? You see it 400 times, but you know what? After about 400 times, I actually ordered that crazy bra or that pair of shoes or whatever. So just remember and watch your own behavior. How many times you had to see that before you actually were either convinced to buy it or actually yeah. needed it. Maybe I didn't need that thing at that time, but when I do need it, I'm going to remember I saw that thing because I saw it 400 times last week. So I'm not, yeah. I'm not telling you to post anything 400 times, but when you're consistent, people will begin to see you and then they'll call on you when they need what you have. So I mm -hmm. think definitely it has resulted in a lot of great revenue for Hannah and I, but definitely not, I can't say it's directly from a post. Like I posted this one thing and I sold a ton of it. It's more like I have cultivated this business. So people begin to know, like, and trust me and they know where yeah. to go when the need arises. Also, yeah, that's pivotal. 
Yeah, it's very important. And we had somebody ask about, I think it was Ashley, asked about friend requests. And I think she was asking, do you accept everybody? And I really don't. And I really would love to take this opportunity to tell you guys really quick, because I know Hannah has something to share with you too. Um, I've recently got a lot of likes and shares on one specific video I did a few months ago. And all of a sudden it started getting all this action on it. And I recognized it was a lot of East Indian men who I didn't recognize any of their names. And it was like Habib Abdul Jabbar or something or other, or, you know, the classic picture of the one guy who's like, he's a pilot and never fails the one who sends you the fake request. He's a pilot and he's like, you know, like, hey, I always tell my husband, oh, look, Michael Smith, the pilot wants to be my friend, you know, because it's always some fake profile. So I really never accept men's friend requests because I'm showing makeup, um, you know, certain men, of course, and some men really like makeup, but across the board that keeps me safe in and of who I am. Um, and mm -hmm. that's my personal choice. We sell men's skincare. So it's a cool, like accept their friend requests if you know them or trust them or whatever. I'm just saying standard across the board. That's, that's how I operate. So when I saw these like crazy names that I don't recognize, I just went and blocked them. It's no big deal. Don't be afraid. You know, if you see somebody pop on there, send you friend requests, that seems a little creepy. Say, you know, don't accept their friend request and go block them. It's okay. You're not going to hurt anybody's feelings. They don't know you. And especially if you don't have any mutual friends, or if your only mutual friend is like Estelle Day, She's everybody. Her grandma <laughs> is friends with her. That doesn't really mean they're a mutual friend. But if I had like two or three mutual friends, like maybe Hannah and uh, Sandra and Linda, then I would go, okay, this person knows us somehow, maybe if only just through Jaffra and that's okay with me. So, you know, you could pick and choose who you like. You don't have to accept everybody, but I don't like to limit my business to only people that I know in my business. Mm -hmm personal is another issue. So please forgive me for ranting on, but I just wanted to address all those questions. No, I think that's great. And I think you guys, again, I said this a little bit earlier, but I really want you to internalize this, like write it down on a piece of paper. Do not have a scarcity mindset. Your people are out there. They're going to find you. So you don't need random Abdul Jabbar, who's trying to be your follower because is he your tribe? Is he your client? Like, is he going to buy concealer from you with, with today. cucumber extract? Not today. <laughs> no, no, he's not. So it's okay to say no to that. Like she's saying, it's okay to block those people because you know what? That is not your tribe. That is not your person. It's okay. Your people are going to find you though. So the more you put yourself out there, the more your people are going to find you. They have more opportunities to find you. The more consistently you post, the more you put yourself out there. So, and, and, and just wanted to jump back really quickly to one other thing that Jackie said is she, she sees these things like 400 times and then she finally decides to go and buy it. This is, this is a true marketing fact, y'all. People need to see things seven to 10 times before it even really registers in their brain what you've told them. So you're thinking, I posted this one post about mascara. I spent a lot of time. Nobody liked it. Well, like, no, first of all, please don't internalize that. This is just like you, again, I go back to this. You are a business owner. This is like business marketing 101. This is real. That, Macy's, they do the same thing. They just have more money to blast it all over the place because they know it's going to take people 20 times before they even say, oh, I do want that pair of shoes, actually. Thank you for posting that. So it takes some time. Please don't internalize that. Um, don't, and that's why I say there's no magic post. There's no magic time. It, and like Jackie said, it's about cultivation. Even going back to Linda's question about, okay, when you do a live and how much money do you make? That one girl who bought $100 from me, she's like my girl. Like we go back. It's like, so of course she's going to, she's going to be happy to leave, drop $100 with me. Cause I have built that relationship already with her. And she does know me. She does like me. She trusts me. So I want you to think more about that and not again, leading with the dollar signs, even though those people are with our, our clients, like what is in it for them? What's the value I can bring to them? So I just want to, I just want to speak to that and do not have that scarcity mindset, have a mindset of abundance. Your people will find you, put yourself out there as who you are. Don't try to put yourself out there like you're Jackie out. If you are not a 27 year makeup artist, like doing that thing, you don't need to be hurt. You just need to be you. Like, and I'm not saying don't talk about makeup, but you know what I mean? Like be authentic to yourself. Um, 
people will pick up on that, right? There's only one you, and I know it's a cheesy saying, but go out there and be you. And that's what's gonna draw people into that no like, and trust factor. So we have 10 minutes left. I wanted to show you guys something very practical for your, your business page about how can you invite people? Because I think there's a lot of missed opportunities because like Jackie said, sometimes they'll like a singular post, but you're not capturing that. One way to start really building that relationship is to capture them and say, hey, I saw that you liked my post. Now I wanna invite you to like my page so they continue, can continue to see more content like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna really quickly um, share my screen and um, so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Now um, you see over, hopefully you guys can see this. If you can't, this is something Natalie Goucher, so don't worry about that. But if you can't see my screen, please let me know. I switched it over to Facebook. So if you can see that, please let me know. Jackie, can you see my Facebook page? Yes, no, maybe so, yes, anyone? I can okay. see the screen and the page just fine. Okay, good. And I'm getting all these messages. Okay. So I want you to guys to go over here to the left side of my screen here where the notifications is. So this is a new business page I have. Um, as you can see, I love to preach about the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial mindset. So I've started a new business page about that where you can just get encouragement, right? So I, I literally, this is perfect though. So I'm just starting to build my following. I want you to see this little, um, this first thing here with four hours ago, Tori Tawana Thomas liked my comment or my post and so did Jocelyn Odell. I want to show you guys this with your Facebook business page because Facebook will let you know when you should be inviting people to follow you. They literally say, help them see more future posts by inviting them to like your page. So all I have to do is click on this. It brings up this beautiful little box. Here's my picture, whatever. It brings up the app, the post that they like. So they saw this post, they like it. Now I'm gonna go down here to these little reactions, right? I'm going down here and I'm gonna click them. You can go over here to the all section and, um, or you can hit one of these reactions. It doesn't matter what it is. But here's the opportunity where you can invite people. So now this looks a little bit different, right? So these people are actual business pages that have decided to like my business page. So I could follow them back. Um, but you can see here uh, with LaCole Brennan, okay, right here, I've invited her. When, um, when I haven't invited her, this comes up like a little blue button that says invite. All you have to do is hit that button. And I've now, it now has sent her a notification like, hey, Hannah has invited you to like this page. You can see that I've invited all of these people to like this page, right? So this is a really great tool that I don't want you guys to miss. And literally Facebook says, help them see your future posts by liking your page. That is gonna help build uh, that fan base of people who like what I'm already offering. Here again, Jocelyn Odell, she accepted your invite because what, I, what did I do when they told me to invite her? I did. So just make sure that you're not missing out on that opportunity. That's just something really practical um, I wanted to show you guys because when you have your business page, a lot of times Facebook knows that you're trying to build that awareness and that following. So they're saying, hey, come over here. Did you see that this person liked your, your, your post? Did you invite her to like your page? And that helps you to build more of that tribe, more of that awareness, more of that following. So again, that's just a really small thing. It comes up in your notifications. Even if you, um, I'm gonna show, well, I'm gonna show you guys one other thing. I know we're getting close to our end time. See, I told you guys at the beginning that Jackie and I could talk oh, for geez. forever about everything, but I'm gonna come over here and show you this with pages. Um, this is another thing. So you can see all the different little business pages I manage. Another way, if you're like, Hannah, I don't even know how to get to that notifications menu that you just showed me. Um, all you have to do is when you're in your big main Facebook, go over here to where it says pages. It's going to bring up your business page and you can go right over here to notifications. Um, and you can see what's going on here. What's going on now? I'm interacting with Hannah. Oh, I posted this. This person likes that, blah, blah, blah. And that's where you get that same set of notifications that say, oh, did you, did you notice that this person liked your post? You should invite them. Okay. So I just want to show you guys where you can find that and how to really utilize that tool, because that's, a, a, those are some bit, um, missed opportunities that when someone likes your post like that and you're not inviting them, 
that's a missed opportunity. That's another way that you can continue to build that big fan base. Okay. So that's a practical tip for something that you guys can do um, in Facebook. Hopefully that helps a little bit. We have, Sandra, I see you nodding. So thank you for affirming me. <laughs> okay. So we have six minutes left. You guys have been fantastic tonight. I hope that Jackie and I have brought you some encouragement, taught you some trip, some tips about how you can really build that following. Please um, comment in the chat. If you guys have questions, I wanna make sure um, that we get your questions answered. If you wanna go ahead in the last six minutes and unmute yourself and ask any questions, please let um, let me know. I know that Tracy, you, made a, you asked a question, if I don't have product, how do I do a video? What do I do? If you have just a catalog, just like Jackie did with the book, you can do that too. So again, if you don't have product, it's okay. You can still do your lives. You can still do your videos. Um, I know, again, we talked a lot about video. I do want to say, and Jackie is the queen of this, um, and she's she's helped me understand this all the more too. If I don't have, if, I, I'm, if, if I'm not doing a video and I do want to post myself with a product, it is much better for me to post my, a picture of myself holding the little product that I want to talk about or whatever and being like, yay, than it is for me to take this, just a picture of this and post it and be like, buy this bee for me. Like, no. But if it's me and I'm putting my face out there, because again, people, um, people buy from us because they like us, not because they can't get mascara any any other place, right? Um, Tracy, go ahead and unmute yourself. I see you have another question. Okay, like, um, what was I gonna, so when you post all this, you post on your Facebook page and in your group, the same every three days or whatever, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So you post all on both pages, right? Your group page and your business page. Um, Jack, do you want to answer? So I would definitely decide which one you're going to do. You don't have to do them both. Um, unless, so let me tell you really quick about my group. So I have my private group that is just my clients. I didn't go spam a bunch of people and invite them to my group. These are actually people that have purchased from me. So I keep them in there because then I don't have to cultivate it so much. Th those are my clients. So when I have a sale on a product, I can actually put that in there. They don't care. They want to see what's on sale because they're already purchasing from me. But on my page, that's where I try to cultivate more relationships. I do in that group, I'll do special little lives for them. I do special sales for them too, like uh, free shipping all this month. I just want to thank you so much for all of your orders, all of those kinds of things. But um, I typically will only do that twice a week. And it's usually something really quick, unless it's a special live. If we get a brand new product, I want to show just them something great and wonderful. That's also where I can post stuff about the kits. Like I don't post on my Facebook page, like Jaffer has a $19 kit. I just, I don't want to, I, I don't want to overdo like the kit because nobody cares that we have a kit if they're not already in Jaffer. We think it's great because we love Jaffer, but they, they're like, okay. But over in my group, I always do the this or that that I steal from Hannah every month when she's got a <laughs> product that's the same price as a kit. And it's like, you could get the kit for the same price as the product. I'll put that in my little group only about once a month. I don't bug them with that either because it's not like they don't know they can sign up. So I keep that over there. But in my Facebook business page, that's my store, I post Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or whatever day I say I'm going to do. And even the night before I'll post, don't forget to join me live tomorrow for blah, blah, blah. If it's a live, because then I'm held accountable. Like Sam Hannah said, I can't back out on myself. Um, or if I'm not doing a live, if I know that I'm not going to do one, or if I'm busy, um, I will post a photo or uh, something else on that day. So choosing your days for your, for your actual page, and for your group are important because you don't need to share everything from your page to your group because your group already saw your page anyway and they don't feel very special then. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Making them feel special. So when you have your client group or a VIP group, you want to do something extra for them so they feel special. So that's why the content might be a little bit different. Um, okay, we have two minutes. And I want to say one thing, you guys have been fantastic tonight. You know that you can, you know that you can ask Jackie and I questions anytime, send us messages. You know, we have a heart for you. Yes. Um, I want, I really want to, I want to deep dive in this really quickly in our last two minutes or one minute now is it takes time. Be patient with yourself. Jackie has said a pivotal word a few times. She said the word cultivate. 
and cultivating a true following and a, and a fan base that like responds to you and will drop a hundred dollars when you say so or whatever that takes time so again there's no magical pill and like with anything in life we just have to be diligent and faithful in it and it will come together so really focus this week on cultivating focus this week on sharing a feature and a benefit and just offering education without saying, Hey, buy for me. Um, that, that's our homework for you guys. That's our challenge for you is go out and do that and see what happens. See, see if you don't get more interaction and more comments, more questions, um, from those people that are following you. Um, so I just want to say, be patient with yourself and you guys, there's enough out there for all of us to be successful. Your tribe will find you. So Thank you all for being here. I'm gonna go ahead and stop our recording and boot you all out of this amazing meeting, but you've got this and you're absolutely fabulous. Thank you guys. Let's finish October strong, okay? Thanks bye, everyone. everyone. Have a fabulous week. Yes, bye. Bye, bye. Thank bye. You. Thanks, Jackie. Bye.